Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your earth science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to talk about Long Island's water, specifically where does Long Island get our water from? I don't know if you noticed before, but when you turn on the tap, usually you never have a problem getting water, especially here on Long Island and in our community of Garden City. If you uh, turn on the hose outside, same thing, get water. There are some restrictions on watering your lawn in your community, but for the most part, really don't have a problem getting water. Most of us have noticed a few towers like this scattered around our community. These are water towers. Water is basically held, pumped into, and stored in these towers. Underneath Long Island, there are three aquifers. These aquifers are basically areas of sediments such as sands and silts that contained water between the pores. There are three major aquifers on Long Island. There's the upper glacial, which supplies most of our streams and rivers, lakes, ponds with the, the water that's in them. The Magathy and the Lloyd are the two are two aquifers that are underneath Long Island's basically surface. This is where we get most of our groundwater. This is where we get really all of our drinking water from. New York City, on the other hand, they actually get their water from reservoirs up uh, in from upstate New York, and it's piped down into the major parts of New York City. If we take a look at groundwater here, we can see that as we go through our water cycle, we have precipitation, some ends up as runoff, but in this area right here, we have infiltration. Notice that as it infiltrates and percolates through the water, it fills up our zone of saturation or underneath our water table, and that the water moves or the groundwater flow is basically towards these streams. And that's what's supplying here. This would be very similar to our upper glacial on Long Island. Not really much different. This is what the actual ground, the aquifers look like underneath Long Island. See here we have bedrock which slopes away. So this is like Connecticut over here and we go out to the ocean, the Atlantic. And notice that the bedrock tilts down. We have the Lloyd aquifer right here which is confined by raritan clay. Clay, because of the extremely small uh, sediment size and the pore spaces, really doesn't allow for the movement of groundwater across it. Then we have our Magathy aquifer right here. Notice it's a relatively large aquifer. Once again, all sediments in here that have water between the spores, pore spaces. Then our upper glacial aquifer right here. And this is the one I said that supplies mostly our streams and rivers. There's two others. There's the Jamaco right here, but for the most part, we don't really have access to this uh, as it's underneath our barrier islands. If we pump groundwater from Long Island, so here we have a well, the water is gonna come out through the well, and you notice that we have a little bit of disruption of the groundwater flow. We continue to pump, it'll actually move inwards like this, where we could potentially pull salt water. So for Long Island, especially communities near the, maybe towards the South Shore, if there is too much pumping of groundwater, it'll actually pull in salt water. But we don't have a well, such as in the slide before, we can actually, the fresh water will make its way or push out any of that salt water. So there's a balance that we have to play. We want to make sure that that water that infiltrates and percolates into the ground is always there to keep salt water out. At the same token, we need to be able to use some of that water. So we have to make sure that we're not pumping too much to allow for the salt water to come into Long Island's aquifers. This is just taking another look at Long Island aquifers and basically the travel time or the years it takes for groundwater to move. So if you look up here, water basically makes its way through the upper glacial in a number of years, one to 10 years. The deeper we get down into the magaphy, the water takes 25 years to percolate down. And as it moves through, you can see it takes longer, longer, and longer. The Lloyd Aquifer, thousands of years, this water is in there for. Long time. So the Lloyd Aquifer, are one of our oldest aquifers, basically the water has been there longer than most people have been around, as far as we know. There are a couple of different ways we use water. We alluded to basically that we can pump from the hose outside 
or from uh, water inside the house. Here are just some water consumption facts. Basically, average American uses about 140 gallons of water per day. It's quite a bit. Uh, in the U.S., we drink about 110 million gallons of water. Uh, that stuff, uh, you know, we I think most people know about how much water we need, about 80 ounces per day. But the biggest fact here is this, this 140 gallons of water per day, because we can change the amount of water that we're using. If you take a look at this, you can see some averages it takes from gallons of water used. Flush the toilet, about five gallons. Shower, 15 to 30, or a bath, 40 gallons. So these areas are where we could try to cut back and save a little bit of water. For instance, if we just get rid of a bath, we can save the amount of water we're using and take shorter showers. Outdoor water use, here on Long Island, we are watering our lawns quite a bit. So that's what you're gonna see during the summertime, a lot of use of waters. And in Garden City, as we know, you can only water your lawn on alternate days. That is the cut down on the amount of water that people use. That's about it. We're gonna hold off on water pollution until next time. I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.